Hey everyone, it is Krista Friel with Friel Family Farms and I thought I'd do a video today on growing things in a, in a greenhouse over winter. So one of the things that I like to do is grow things and so the winter can be exceptionally hard for me beyond just the really cold temperatures because I like to play in the dirt. Um, luckily, I have an awesome husband who built me this amazing greenhouse so that we can keep doing our favorite thing, which is being sustainable and growing our own vegetables and raising our own meat. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about how do you do this? Like, how is it even possible? So I'm going to give you a little tour of our greenhouse in case you didn't watch any of our summer videos. So this is my greenhouse. What it is, it used to be an old chicken coop and we just uh, tore off the old siding and we put on some plastic uh, that was rated for greenhouses. It was pretty inexpensive. We actually got some of it free and put that on and like that was it. Oh, we did put on this sliding door. So we put a new sliding door in on our house. So we moved the old sliding door out here and made a frame to, for it to fit in. So that was all that we really had to do. That was pretty awesome. Um, for heat, for the winter, all that I'm really doing right now is using these really cool heat lamps like you would use for a livestock. Um, make sure you're using the red ones and not the white ones. The white ones will get too hot and they can actually start a fire and burn your plants and that's not what you're wanting. So these red ones like actually put off enough heat that it will keep your greenhouse nice and warm, which is why I'm out here uh, in 27 degrees weather with just a little flannel on and a t-shirt. Um, as you can see out these windows, there is snow on the ground. It is 27 degrees, so it's doing a pretty good job in here. Um, some other things that you could do is you could definitely get, um, there's mats that you can buy to put under plants to keep them warm. Um, and you can actually buy like solar lights to hang up in your greenhouse. But we're trying to do this pretty sustainably, pretty low cost. So these uh, infrared lights actually do a really great, great job for us. Um, you can actually do a lot more to actually keep it even cheaper than that. So what we're planning to do this summer is paint this cement floor in here black. Because as everybody knows, black actually absorbs heat and then it will release it slowly through the evening, keeping the temperature in here um, a little bit better regulated. Some other things that you could do other than that is like move your compost pile into your greenhouse if it's big enough. Um, as you know, all things create uh, energy and energy creates heat. So if you have compost that's breaking down, they'll automatically put in heat for you so you wouldn't have to heat your greenhouse. Something else that we've talked about doing is putting our rabbit hutches in here. Um, rabbits put off a lot of heat and then the nice thing is their poop is great fertilizer and it doesn't have to sit like chicken poop does. Um, rabbit poop is actually okay to go ahead and just put right into the soil. It won't burn your plants. So, and that's another way to just keep it warm in here because another living thing that pits off energy is going to also create heat. So those are some ideas. There's tons more um, really cool ones that you can find like on Pinterest or online um, where people use like wood stoves and um, hydroponics to heat their greenhouses. We haven't quite gotten that adventurous yet, um, especially since this seems to work just fine for us. And let me introduce you to my sweet little helper today. This is Miss Kaylee. Can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> so she's been playing outside, which is why she's all bundled up, um, which is kind of nice. They're, they get to play outside while I stay kind of warm in here. So. Um, so let me get started talking about the kinds of plants that you can do in the winter. So unfortunately, in Indiana, it, you're even... I mean, unless you are paying quite a bit of money to get your greenhouse heated, you're probably not going to be able to do tomatoes and squashes and things like that that you would do like as a summer crop. So what you're going to be looking for is late fall, spring type crops to add to your garden uh, and your greenhouse because those are going to be things that even if it does drop really, really cold in here and the lights just can't keep up with the heat, that as long as they're not getting like actually covered with frost, they'll do fine. So what we have done, and I'll show you here, is I have snow peas. So snow peas actually got their name because they do well in the snow. Um, they originated in Asia, so they're pretty, um, they can do pretty well with colder temperatures. As you know, peas are climbers, so I created this little trellis for them to climb on as they start to grow. Uh, and this one here, we got some Swiss chard, 
going. Um, we got some carrots over here. Some other things that do really well is I have this, it's called Landis Winter, which is a type of lettuce that you can get from Baker's Creek um, that does really well in winter. And it's very similar to like a green leaf butter crunch mix. It's really, really good. It's nice and tender, still pretty sweet. It doesn't have that spicy um, taste to it like you'd get with like arugula. So I uh, really enjoy that one. So that one's going here we have some beets and here we have some kale. So kale is another one that does really, really good in cold temperatures. What I did is I just made sure I grabbed some soil that was um, not frozen and actually it was frozen. So I stuck it in here last night so it would not be frozen when I went to use it. And we have pretty sandy soil here. So I added some peat moss in with it and just kind of did my own soil blend and I put those in the pots and then... Um, put them in the and planted the seeds and made sure that I watered them generously. Unfortunately, um, what I normally do in this winter is succession planting. So as plants are starting to kind of die, like the lettuces, the Swiss chard and things like that, I'm going ahead and planting the next uh, group of vegetables so that we have like a continuous supply. But if you've been following us at all, you know, this summer, um, I actually had several surgeries and was laid up for a really long time. So we weren't able to actually get out here until now. And I'm just really thankful that I'm actually able to get out here. Um, I'm walking better. I'm getting around. I have a clean bill of health. So I just feel extremely grateful to be back and doing what I want to do. So that's why I don't have anything going now. I wish I did have some things to show you. But I'll keep you updated as these things are getting started. Um, again, there, I know in my gardener actually has a section if you're new to gardening on uh, cold hardy plants. So you can just pick straight from their website um, some plants that will do well for you. And some of it just takes a little bit of research. So making sure that um, you're picking those plants that do well in here in our greenhouse during the day. It gets to about 50 and it drops down to about 30 at night. The nice thing about um, getting the plants started though is as I've mentioned before, especially with the rabbits, the more living things that you have, the more energy that you're producing and energy causes heat. So as these plants start growing, they'll actually start pitting off a lot of their own heat and that'll just kind of help keep it heated in here. It'll help the heat release a little bit slower at night, raising the temperature up a little bit so it's not getting qu down quite to just, you know, 30 degrees, even though that is completely fine for a lot of these uh, vegetables, which is why I chose these. So. I hope this is helpful for you. I hope this inspires you to see that anybody can do this. It really doesn't take a lot. If you don't have an old building that you can turn into a greenhouse, um, there's some really cool resources on Pinterest where you can do cold frames. So it's like using windows and building like a little box and actually using that in the winter to grow things as well. So don't let the winter get you down. Uh, you can still get out, play in the dirt, grow things. Uh, you just have to be a little bit more creative. You are a little bit more limited, but sometimes that's good because I know we don't really eat a lot of beets during the summer. So we will, uh, it'll be more of a treat this winter, I guess. So it was really good to get it out here, do a video finally, and say hi to all of you. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Make sure you like our channel and subscribe. That would be huge as we try to build this up. And I know that Mr. Frill is going to be getting ready to do a lot of fishing and tanning and some more hunting videos uh, coming up. So be watching for those. Anyway, from us here at Frill Family Farm, take care and we'll talk to you later. Bye.